Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create some extreme 3D graphics here inside of After Effects. The goal of this tutorial is not just to showcase on how to create you know, exaggerated 3D text, but on how to add other basic graphics to ultimately turn this into an awesome 3D scene. So if you're ready to create something awesome, please be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps us out tremendously, and let's get started. All right, here we are inside of After Effects. You can download the project files for free if you wish to follow along. You can also download our free 100 template duck pack here for After Effects and Premiere Pro. Those links are in the description below. So we have our tutorial composition. We have a title already typed out. But before we make this 3D, we want to add in some custom objects that we could also turn into a 3D object very easily. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So we can come here to the top. We can grab the pen tool, make sure fill is turned off, and you can turn the stroke on to solid color. And we'll use a stroke width of, say, about 30. And we click a point and click another point across and you know uh, curve this out to create a nice little curve like this we can click off of it then we can open up our shape layer go to add and we'll quickly add a trim paths we'll open it up we'll add a keyframe for start move forward in time by two seconds and set up to 100 percent feel free to make those keyframes easy ease by hitting f9 on your keyboard then what we can do is take our shape layer we can go to edit duplicate we can move it randomly around our composition we get R on our keyboard for rotation, rotate it by say 90 degrees, or excuse me, 180 degrees. And we just create some like unique variants. So maybe we want this one to be slightly angled here on the corner. All right, and I've created some random objects here. We can also come here back to our pen tool and maybe this time we can create a quick V and we can use this just as an arrow. And then we can go back to our trim paths. We can copy the trim paths once somewhere and just paste it on uh, to that new shape layer for that arrow or V layer that we've created and we'll have everything animated on. It's gonna look kind of cool. And then you can just like offset the layers and your timeline slightly here. And then one last thing I wanna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, go to effect, generate, and grab a gradient ramp. We'll see our anchor points here on the top and bottom. Let's grab the top anchor point. Let's slide it over here to the left side of the composition and then grab the bottom anchor point and move it towards the, you know, I guess center right side of the composition. And we're gonna have a very slight gradient here. You can maybe change the black a little bit. There we go. And this will create a nice little shading effect when we turn this into a 3D uh, layer. All right, so if you're happy with your design, go ahead and select all your layers, go to Layer, Pre-Compose. We'll call it Placeholder and click OK. All right, the first thing we wanna do is actually get the 3D camera movement in here first because it's a lot easier to nail that down uh, when you don't have a lot of layers to work with. So let's go ahead and make our composition a 3D layer and we'll come here to Layer, New Camera, click OK. So the nail in the camera movement that you want, what we can do is open up camera one, go to transform, add a keyframe for point of interest and position. And maybe we'll also do say a Z rotation. When we come here to the top, you can grab the orbit around cursor tool. This is essentially your camera tool. You can hit C on your keyboard and you're gonna cycle through a handful of different camera tools. And here we can kind of just rotate our title a little bit. Maybe we can zoom into it. All right, so we have something here. We can move forward in our timeline, maybe to 10 seconds or something. And then we can maybe zoom into our title if we want. So we can cycle through the camera tools by hitting C on keyboard. We can zoom in, reposition how the title is framed in our shots and just continue to cycle through the tools and just rotate it however you see fits. And also if you want, you can adjust the camera Z rotation to make it a little bit easier and control how it rotates. All right, so now we should have a camera movement on our title here. And now we can set this up to be a 3D uh, layer. So what we'll do is we'll hit P on keyboard for position, Alt click the stopwatch, and we'll go ahead and type in this expression. You can copy paste it from the video description below, or you can just pause the video and make sure your expression says this. So what happens is when we take our placeholder layer, go to edit duplicate, uh, the Z position is going to change by three, which is going to enable this to be like a legit 3D layer very easily. But before we continue to duplicate this like crazy, let's grab the bottom layer and go to effect generate and we'll grab a quick gradient ramp. We'll turn off the top layer for right now. And let's come here to start a ramp and let's kind of set this, you know, anchor point right here and the end of the ramp and put this over here. And before we change the colors, let's go to a layer, new adjustment layer. I'll rename it to control. We'll go to effect expression controls and grab a color control. It's a control a lot. We'll duplicate it so we have two in here. We'll go back to that bottom placeholder. Alt click to stopwatch for start color and end color. So we should have the ability to edit two expressions here. Select your control layer, parent the start color to that first color control and the end color to that second color control. And we'll change our colors here and this will give you the ability to change the color of your overall title fairly easily but what we're trying to accomplish is this sort of uh, shading that we're going to have throughout the entire title so we'll grab our very first color control and we can do like a very nice dark you know red or magenta sort of color we'll give us a little bit of color 
and maybe we'll make this a nice light gray. All right, so the hard part is done. Now we gotta duplicate this like crazy. So we'll grab our bottom layer, and of course we'll turn on our top layer real quick. And we'll come here, duplicate the placeholder graphics by hitting Control D on your keyboard or Command D, and just create a bunch of these. Now we need to create a total of 180-ish sort of copies. So when you get tired of smashing Control D or Command D, just go ahead and select a bunch of the layers except for the top layer, and just duplicate it a bunch of times. Another quick tip, hit cap locks on your computer. And this will freeze the preview of After Effects. All right, so I have a total of 185 layers here. So now we have this 3D graphic here inside of After Effects, uh, and we're just very close to making this look really awesome. And of course, before we move further into our video, if you like saving time while producing awesome work, we have over 18,000 templates for you to use here in After Effects and Premiere Pro. With the Motion Duck extension, you can preview, apply, and modify any templates within a few clicks. Be sure to check out our links in the description below to see all the template packs we have, and don't forget to download your free packs here for Premiere Pro and After Effects. Okay, so first of all, we have a ton of layers in here. What we can do is select everything, scroll to the bottom, shift click, and we can click on this high shy icon, I call it the shy icon, click on that, and then you can click on the shy icon right here, and that will hide everything. So then what we wanna do is go to layer, new solid, We'll select a very dark gray color and click OK. Make sure it's at the bottom of everything, so it should be like layer 186. Then let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer. Let's go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and grab a quick Gaussian Blur. We'll set it up to 2. Then let's go to Effect, Stylize, and let's grab Posterize. And we'll set the level up to, say, about 35, and this will create some uh, actual, I would say, texture, uh, some you know layered lighting gradation like this. Then let's go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and add noise to this. We'll set this up to say maybe 16%. So one thing I want to do is change the color of this. So that's why we have the color control here. And it'll change the entire color of the bevel. So that's why we did that. And at the end of the day, since this is very effect heavy, if you want to change the camera movement, what I suggest doing uh, is just to solo your top layer. And then you go back to your camera tools and you can readjust the camera animation you know, as you see fit. And then unsolo the layer when you're done with your camera animation. And then the very last thing I want to do is actually unhide all of our layers. Go to the very last placeholder graphic, go to Effect, Perspective, and grab a Drop Shadow effect. We can set the softness up to 20 and maybe the opacity to 100% right off the start. Then we can duplicate our Drop Shadow effect and set the softness maybe up to like 200, maybe a little bit more than that, but it's up to you. And that'll create like a nice sort of shadow effect at the bottom of our title. So by perfecting the camera angle and figuring out what's best for your scene, you can have a really cool 3D scene like this here inside of After Effects uh, and it's very stylized and you can obviously change the color to whatever fits your needs. So thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We post multiple videos like this every single week here on our channel and always be creating.